a very good evening uh, to you dear brothers uh, in uh, christ so last few weeks uh, we studied about uh, jesus second coming that how our lord returned uh, invisibly in uh, 1874 so the uh, one more important part that is left over with us is uh, the concept of uh, rapture because everybody majority of the christians have the idea that as soon as the lord returns he will uh, take the church away so the rapture uh, will happen you see so the, immediately when jesus returns uh, the rapture uh, will happen and the church will be taken away you see there will be two people who will be going one will be taken away other will be left on so one is a believer uh, who will be taken away unbeliever will be left on and uh, you see uh, if uh, two people are riding on the bike uh, and if the driver uh, is a christian he will be taken away and the passenger will be left like that only just to die imagine if the same condition is about a airplane the pilot is a christian and during the time of rapture you see if he is taken away what about the condition of the passengers on board so <clears throat> this is the general idea of uh, rapture because of this only many people uh, you see the very zealous christians they put it back of the vehicle also saying that uh, during the time of rapture this vehicle will be unarmed so you see you be very cautious uh, maintain distance uh, they would have put uh, okay now where do they get this idea about rapture if you see that word rapture doesn't come in the bible even once also okay if that word rapture doesn't come in the bible what about uh, its idea does the bible give any such idea yes the bible gives uh, you see the idea of such a thing so let us read uh, a few verses uh, first thessalonians 4 chapter 16 and 17 uh, home brother uh, you can read first thessalonians 4 16 and 17 brother For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall raise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up cloud to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord thank you brother so here uh, uh, apostle paul claims says uh, the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of which a uh, sound of archangel you see and then the dead in christ shall rise first then in verse 17 very important thing he tells that then we which are alive shall be caught up together with the lord in the air shall be caught up together with the lord in the air friends uh, when jesus returns uh, the dead will be resurrected and the faithful church uh, who are living there they will be caught up uh, you see taken up uh, puck uh, immediately you see to join the lord in the air so this is the general uh, idea of concept because of uh, this verse you see that uh, as soon as jesus returns this will happen okay let us read luke 17 chapter 34 to 37 brother a uh, home brother please read brother luke 17 chapter 34 to 37 I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed the one shall be taken and the other shall be left two men shall be grinding together 
the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And okay. they answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hombudar. So here, uh, Jesus uh, clearly says uh, in verse uh, 34, in that night, uh, two men shall be on one bed. One shall be taken, other be left away. See, one be taken, other be left away. And verse 35, it says, two men, two men shall be grinding. One shall be taken, other left. 36, it says, one shall be in the field, other be taken away. So based on these verses only, many people uh, think that one will be taken away, other will be left off. You see, so the faithful Christians will be raptured, they will be taken. You see, just like that, uh, as soon as uh, Jesus comes, they will be living on the earth, uh, just like that. Immediately the same body, you see, they will go to heaven. You see, and this will happen with the twinkling of an eye. Immediately they will be changed. Uh, read First Corinthians 15, chapter 51 and 52. <clears throat> Behold, I show you a mystery. mystery. We shall not all mystery. We shall we shall we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last. Trump for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised in corruptible and we shall be changed. Ah, see, here also it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. How fast? How, how we shall be changed? The church will be raptured, they'll be changed. How? In verse 52, it says, In a moment, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised. You see, it. So everybody thinks that uh, as soon as Jesus returns, uh, the faithful church uh, will be living in the flesh. They'll be just uh, taken up, and as they're taken up, they'll be changed from what to what? Uh, from this fleshly nature. To spiritual nature, they will be changed, it seems. How? Like how the angels were getting changed in the first world from flesh to human, so from spirit being to human body, and from back from human body to spiritual body. So they will change him here, it seems. You see, okay. Now, if you read that verse, it clearly says, you see, verse 52, and the dead shall raised incorruptibly, and we shall be changed. Now, verse 53 and uh, 54, brother. Please read 53 and 54, brother. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible they shall have put on incorruption, and this moral shall have put on immortality. Then shall be proud to pass the saying that written, death is swallowed up in victory. Ah, so once the change happens, what does Apostle Paul say? Then only the death shall be swallowed in victory. Now who is the death swallowed in victory? We have the beautiful example of our Lord Jesus Christ. How did the Lord Jesus Christ go to heaven? Did he change like this only miraculously? Even he was living in the fleshly body and suddenly changed into a spiritual body? Huh? How did Jesus overcome the power of death? How did Jesus defeat the devil? Read Hebrews Hebrews, second chapter, 
14th verse brother hebrews 2:14 brother okay <clears throat> for as much as then as the children are partakers of flesh and flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil ah see here this verse clearly says how jesus overcome the power of death you see the devil how by tasting death by suffering death by suffering death and being resurrected on the third day this is how he overcome the power of death over him if jesus himself has died and then was resurrected and then only he got the reward how can somebody his faithful followers who are following the footsteps of jesus without tasting death how can they be changed hence this verses what we have read is not speaking about the change over of body of change of our nature without tasting death see who were as to go to heaven he can't go to heaven in this uh, natural body read 1 corinthians 15 50 same 1 corinthians 15th chapter verse 15 Now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither doth corruption inherit in corruption see neither the flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God no it can't inherit the kingdom of God you can't go to heaven in this uh, fleshly body so you have to leave this fleshly body so once you are leaving this fleshly body how do we leave it uh? not just change over of nature no 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 you have to leave this body in death because the covenant which the faithful church are made with christ is unto death you see be do faithful unto death then i will give you the crown of life read revelation 210 brother revelation 210 Can somebody read Revelation two ten? Hmm. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and Revelation be brother two ten second chapter tenth verse. Fear none of those things which shall shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. that a may be tried and he shall have tribulation 10 days be the faithful unto death and i will keep the uh, crown of life ah see be the faithful unto death then i will give the crown of life so if somebody has to be faithful to get the crown of life they have to be faithful till death that is how our lord proved his faithfulness then only he got the divine nature similarly all the faithful church or following in the footsteps of jesus they have to taste death then only they can attain the divine nature in the resurrection then why did apostle paul say behold i'll tell you a mystery that we shall not all sleep what is this mystery what is the meaning of sleep in first corinthians 15 uh, you see 51 everybody thinks that uh, sleep means death no in the bible sleep not only means death it also means a waiting period after one person dies till the resurrection happens the complete process is called and compared to sleep in the bible you all remember we have studied the subject about soul human soul that the soul dies you see in that subject we have clearly studied that uh, what is the meaning of uh, you see the death condition today we have seen that in the bible the death condition is compared to a beautiful sleep we have a beautiful example of uh, you see lazarus lazarus was dead you see 
and he was uh, in the grave for three days. When the news came to Jesus, Jesus clearly said that Lazarus sleeps. I go him that uh, you see to wake him up. I go that uh, I may wake him up. So what did uh, Jesus uh, say there? Jesus compared his death condition to a sleep. I go that I may wake him, you see, from the sleep. That means he was not speaking about uh, the death uh, moment uh, which Lazarus, uh, you see, ended his life. Uh, he was speaking about uh, the condition in he, which he was lying in the grave. Let us read John 11, 12, brother. John 11, chapter verse 12. Our brother, John 11, 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Hmm. 13 and 14 also was there. How bad Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. That means he's already dead and nicely resting in the grave. That condition only Jesus compared to a sleep. What does Apostle Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15 51? Behold, I'll tell you a mystery that we shall not all sleep means what? That means not that we shall not all die. We shall all die, but we shall not all sleep and wait for the Lord's second coming in the grave. See, the apostles were selected by the Lord since the day of Pentecost. They finished their course, uh, remaining faithful to death. You see? And uh, what happened? Uh, they were all resting in the grave till the second uh, return of our Lord Jesus in 1874. They were all waiting for our Lord to return so that uh, he may come and wake the apostles from sleep. So that uh, resurrection of the church, the dead in Christ was supposed to be raised first. That happened as soon as our Lord returned. You see, when Jesus returned, all the faithful people, all the faithful church who remained faithful and were dead, they were resurrected as soon as the Lord came, you see. But what about the people? What about the church people? What about the faithful church class people who will remain alive at the Lord's second advent? After the Lord's second presence, there are still the church who are running the race. You see, for them, it is not required that after death, they sleep in the grave and wait for the Lord's second presence because they are already living in the presence. So hence, for this particular people who are living after 1874-1878, as soon as they finish their earthly course and prove faithfulness to God until death, immediately within a twinkling of an eye, as soon as they die, immediately God will give them a spiritual body, a divine nature, and they will join the Lord in the air who will already be ruling invisibly from the earth's atmosphere. That's what Apostle Paul clearly says. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I show a mystery. This is a very secret, very mystery. 
that we shall not all sleep and wait for the second uh, presence of our Lord. Because some class of people will be present at the Lord's uh, second presence. And what will happen? 52, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, you see, which is his last trump, you see, there are seven trumpets uh, in the Bible. And this is the last trumpet. This is the seventh trumpet. Uh, let us see what happens in the seventh trumpet. Uh, Revelation 11, 15, brother. Let us see what happens when the last trumpet blows. Revelation 11, 15. Uh, Ashish, brother, can you read? Okay. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and right. he shall reign forever and ever. See, as soon as the seventh angel sounded, uh, the seventh trumpet, uh, you see what happened? Uh, the kingdoms of this world are transferred to Christ. Uh, so since then, his kingdom began to start. You see, and then sir, if Jesus is already done, why should the faithful church remain in the grave? In sleep, in death and wait. It is not at all required. If they already proved their faithfulness, immediately the Lord will give the blessings. Sir. Immediately they will be resurrected. You see, immediately they will be taken. You see, to join the Lord in there. That is the mystery. You see, at last Trump, you see, a dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed from human nature. You see, after death, in the resurrection, to the divine nature. Hence, this verse never speaks about rapture at all. This is speaking about the church remaining faithful to death after 1874. If they are faithful to death, you see, immediately God will give them the prize. which is not required for them to wait till the Second coming, because already Jesus has come. You see, hence you see, uh, we see our now about the seventh trumpet, seventh angel blowing the trumpet. Let us see what happens uh, about uh, uh, the seventh church during the seventh church period. Revelation, <coughs> third chapter, brother. See, Revelation, third chapter, uh, when he speaks uh, about the sixth church, you see what Jesus says in Revelation 3.11. Revelation 3.11. Behold, I'm, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou has, that no man take thy crown. See, behold, I come quickly. So that was during the sixth church. I am coming quickly. But see about the seventh church, what did Jesus say? Revelation 3.20. Hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. See, behold, I stand at the door. Jesus has already come and standing at the door. He is knocking. If any man opens, he will give him strong meat in due season. It is not required for them to remain in death condition. But they have to die. Because the captain of our salvation, the head of the church, he himself proved faithfulness to God on the death on the cross. If he himself has died, then surely we also have to taste death. That is a very, very must condition. If we don't taste death, then surely, you see, the church can never be Part of the first resurrection. Okay. Hence, uh, this uh, rapture word doesn't come in the Bible at all. Okay. Now, if the rapture is not there in the Bible, then what is the meaning of uh, Revelation 17 chapter, which is 34 to 37? So, let us try to understand that one. But uh, before that one, let us read uh, Revelation 14, 13, brother. Uh, home brother, can you read Revelation 14, 13? Home brother, you're there? Revelation 14, 13. Okay. Ah, okay, read with the home brother. 
Uh, read on, brother. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, place are the day which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yeah, said the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Very good, brother. See, it says, uh, huh? I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead uh, who die in the Lord from henceforth. Okay. How can death be called blessed? If somebody dies, uh, everybody mourns, no? But this is the only scripture in the Bible which says, Blessed are the dead. Here, the death is called as a blessed thing. From when? If you read the verse carefully, it tells, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Not to die in the world. These are speaking about the faithful church class, the faithful lack and 44, the faithful Christians. If they die in the Lord, it is a very blessed thing. From when? It says from henceforth. Which is the henceforth? That henceforth is a period since 1874. Beginning from 1874, any faithful church class people, if they die, the Bible says they are the blessed people. Why? Because all the previous faithful members of the church, they died. They had to wait for the Lord's second presence. But these people are living in the day of the Lord. They are living in the presence of the Lord. Hence, uh, there is no need for them to wait. Therefore, it says, huh, Blessed are the days which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. You see, as we are living in the flesh, we have tiredness, weakness, uh, you see, fatigue, everything. So, they will rest from all these uh, labors, but their works do continue them. Whatever work we are doing for the Lord, the same work we will be continuing with the Lord on that side of the veil. This is the blessedness of the people, church people who are dying since 1874. Remember, what did we read in Daniel 13 chapter? Daniel 13 chapter, brother. Uh, sorry, Daniel 12 chapter. Uh, Daniel 12 chapter verse uh, verse 13 uh, verse 12 and 13 Daniel 12 chapter verse 12 and 13 uh. Blessed is he that waited and come to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days but go do thy way till the end be for those shall rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the day see what does he say blessed is he that waited the uh, and come out to the 1,335 days. Why does it call it blessed? Who waits till 1,335 days? Sir? Because all the previous people who have waited till 1874, they had to wait in death. But here, there is no more waiting period. It says, blessed is he. You see, that waited till, but after 1874, the 1,335 days where it ended in 1874, it is a blessedness that there is no need for us to wait in the grave. Immediately as we have proved faithfulness to Lord, in death we will be resurrected in the first resurrection. This is the blessedness. Okay, now let us come to Luke 17 chapter. Then if this is speaks not about the rapture, then why did Jesus say in Revelation, sorry, in Luke 17 chapter, that one will be taken away, other will be left. In that night, uh, two will be on bed, one will be taken, other left. Luke 17, 35, it says, two men will be grinding, one will be taken, other left. Verse 36, two men will be in field, other one will be taken, other left. Why? See, and where did they go? We have, we all have questions, no? Regarding this verse. The same question sprang up in the mind of the apostles also. What did they do? They asked the Lord this question. Read Luke 17, 37, brother. And 
And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, Peter will the eagles be gathered together. See, the question the disciples asked, Where, Lord? Where, where, where are they taken? Now, what was the answer the Lord gave? Actually, if you observe, that answer doesn't match the question at all. Jesus should have clearly said, they are taken to so-and-so place. How else Jesus should have clearly said, they are taken to heaven. Don't worry. Correct. Now, that was the correct answer. No? But what did Jesus reply? He said, where the body is, they the eagle will gather. Now, is this the correct answer? What did the disciples ask? Sir, you are, you are saying that some people will be taken. Where are they taken? Jesus should have clearly given, they are taken to so and so place. Instead of that one, Jesus is saying, where the dead body is there, there the eagles will gather, it seems. Now, what is the meaning of this? How can you understand? You see, the question and answer doesn't correlate at all. You see, and moreover, what did Jesus say? You see, read verse 34, brother. Home brother, read verse 34. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Ah, you see, it says one shall be taken, other left. Now, Jesus said that one shall be taken up. No, no. Jesus never said taken up. They will be taken. They could be taken either way, sideways, bottom also. Why taken up you think? Because these thoughts are fixed by the false preachers. Jesus never said that they are taken up. They are taken. You see, they could be taken anywhere. You see, it doesn't mention that they were taken to heaven. Neither does it mention that they are taken to the air, to the clouds, to meet the Lord there. No. It says they are taken. Now where? Jesus' answer gives us the clue. It says, where the dead body is, there the vultures will gather. Now tell me, usually when the vultures come in search for the dead body, where is the dead body? Is it uh, up in the sky or down on the ground? Where are the dead bodies? Is it up or is it down? Home brother, where, where are the dead bodies? In a ground. Ground, very good. Now, where is the eagle? Is it up or down? They are like they are looking for the dead body, then they will definitely be uh, at. Come yeah. down. They are in the sky. From okay. there only they will see the dead body and come down. Correct? Huh? Yes. Uh, that means here. The vultures, the eagles are coming to the place where the dead body is there. That means in no way can we correlate this verses to going up. But rather we see coming from up to down. The eagles are coming from up to the place down where the dead body is there. So it is not the reverse at all. From going down to up. But here Jesus says it is coming from up to down. Where the dead bodies are there in the ground there the eagles which are flying high on the sky will come down. So this is not taken up. Taking down. Okay. Now what did Jesus say about two People in bed the night. What is this one? See, this is a totally symbolic scripture. We have studied how to study the Bible. We have seen the 10 points. You see? Huh? The 10 points we have seen now. How to study the Bible? You see? Symbolic language. This verse is also symbolic language. First of all, it says, two people in one bed. Now, what is this bed? See, in the night, after all work, when we are tired, we can go and sleep nicely in the bed. Uh -huh. 
once if you sleep in a bed huh, we feel so comfortable now we feel so relaxed you see we feel so nice so happy isn't it so similarly each and every person has one faith each and every person are sleeping nicely in that faith you see even christians also they have faith now huh? in this one 750 beds are there 750 denominations are there Methodist is sleeping in the Methodist bed. Roman Catholic is sleeping in the Roman Catholic bed. In that faith, they are resting nicely. Pentecost in the Pentecost bed. Uh -huh. But uh, what will happen? You see, the person, the Christians began to grow. Then what will happen? That bed for some Christians are not sufficient. Because they got a lot of questions, sir. They want answers for all the questions. Sir. They research the Bible. They try to move out from the bed. They grow beyond the bed. So the bed is not sufficient for them. That faith is not sufficient for them because they began to reason. You see, then what happens? Sir? When they feel restless in the, you see, small fixed condition, they move out from the bed. These are the people who are taken by the Lord. To where they are taken, we will see. Okay? Now read about the bed in Isaiah 28, 20. Isaiah 28, 20, brother. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. And the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in. You see? For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. Bed is shorter. Uh -huh. A man cannot stretch himself. Which is his bed? You see, that is the faith of the Christians. Each and every denomination has got the own boundary. You should never ask questions. You ask questions, oh, God will get angry. But we are getting the questions. As we read the Bible, we get the questions. You see, we get the question about the Lord's memorial supper. It has to be done yearly once. That's what the Bible says. But they are doing it monthly, weekly. We will get a big question. The Bible says that the soul dies. But they preach that the soul doesn't die. The Bible says hell is a place of grave, the condition of death. But they preach that hell is a place of torment. You see, these type of questions will rise in the mind of the Christians. Then that faith, the answers given in that faith is not at all sufficient. Hence, what happens? The bed is shorter. And it says, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself. The covering, the answers which they give, you see, out of the scriptures, giving examples, nice jokes, everything. So you see, this is not scriptural answer, sir. This is not satisfactory. It doesn't really cover up our question. You see, can we see sleep comfortably if you're having a short bed? Imagine if you're traveling in a train. Huh? Can you sleep comfortably? Yeah? Huh? If you stretch the leg, then uh, head will come out. If you try to manage our head, uh, the leg will go outside the bed. Uh. No comfortable sleep at all, dear brother. Uh -huh. Then, what to do? Okay, we'll take a bedsheet and cover. And that bedsheet also, length is not sufficient. If you cover the head, let the leg, mosquitoes will bite. If you cover the leg, again, what will happen? Huh? Your mosquitoes will bite our head. This is not sufficient. This is the same way. For these people, the Lord takes away. Where does the Lord take it? The Lord takes these faithful Christians to the truth. Okay? To the truth. They are taken from that denomination to the strong food. What did Jesus say? Behold, I am standing at the heart's door and knocking. Knocking through questions. Knocking through doubts. Jesus knocks each and every Christian's hearts in doubts and questions. If anybody wants to search the answer, Jesus will give them strong food. You see, about God's kingdom, about his divine plan, about the Antichrist, about the Lord's second coming, about the Trinity, the soul, hell. Three worlds, beautiful plan of God. These are the truth, the strong food which Jesus is giving now. The meat in due season, not vegetarian food, pakka, non vegetarian food. Meat, meat, Jesus is giving. You see, 
uh, hold your hands like this only. We will come again by reading Luke 12 chapter. Home brother, read Luke 12 chapter. Luke 12. Luke 12 chapter. Verse 37 brother. Luke 12, 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find washing. Verily I saw unto you that he shall, he shall greet himself and make them to sit down to meet and will Come forth and serve them. Okay. What does it say? Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Jesus, when he comes, who are watching, searching the scriptures with doubts and questions, they are blessed. What will Jesus do? Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself, Jesus shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. Meat. Not vegetarian, non vegetarian meat. Strong meat, strong spiritual food, and will come forth and serve them. Jesus will come forth and serve them. Hence, uh, all the strong doctrines, what you were listening for more than a year, isn't it uh, strong meat? You see, have you ever the, heard this truth anywhere else? No, you could never hear. Uh, this is a strong meat in due season given to the faithful church. So, whoever wants to heed this one, they shall be gathered. Okay. Now Luke 17 chapter gives us a second example also. What is that one? Two shall be grinding, one shall be taken. What is this grinding? Generally, the grinding machine is a uh, device that was used to prepare food earlier days and all. Okay. So, who is the one who prepares food, spiritual food today in the churches? If you see, these are the pastors. The daily, every week, the pastors keep on grinding the same thing. Huh? What? First week, when they come, they will uh, preach about, uh, they will grind about contributions, offering. Oh, Lord has blessed you. The blessings you need to give to the Lord. The second king, second week, they come, yeah, they speak about uh, what? Uh, they keep on grinding the same thing. Low, low, low. Third week, huh? They speak about uh, oh, character, character, keep on grinding the same thing. Fourth week, uh, last week, no? The first week, contribution has to come. Then they will speak about judgment. If you're not faithful, judgment will come. Keep on grinding the same thing. Every month, keep on grinding the same thing. First week, second week, third week, fourth week. Grind, 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 grind. Same foot, keep on grinding. Then one person will get fed up. What is this one? I'm preaching the same thing. There's no use at all. Nothing is there. And his mind begins to think a lot of things uh, which are there in the Bible. Questions the Lord. Lord brings such person to the truth. A meat in due season. Okay? This is the second point. Third one, it says two shall be in the field. One taken, another left. Who is the, what is this field? Earlier days, uh, everybody was going to the field to do work. That was the only work there. Agriculture. But today... We have various fields. Computer field is there. You see, college field is there. You see, mechanical field is there. Technology field is there. IT field is there. Medical field is there. Battle field is also there. So everybody are working in different, different fields. And one person seeks the Lord with sincere heart. And he shall be taken. Where? Where are they taken? Jesus clearly gives the answer. Where the dead bodies are, there the vultures will gather. Now, why dead body and vulture Jesus seeks? Have you ever seen 
the eagle eating vegetarian food have you seen brother does e eagle eat vegetarian food home brother does eagle eat vegetarian food no no it only seeks non vegetarian that means meat it is so curious about eating flesh because the flesh is a very strong food hence eagle in the bible are god's children what does the bible say in isaiah he that waiteth upon the lord shall renew his strength like eagles he shall mount upon the you see mountains uh, like eagles in the sky so god's children are compared to eagles in the bible isaiah 40 13 31 ashish brother please read isaiah 40 verse 31 Okay. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with ease, wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hmm. They shall walk and not faint. They shall mount up with eagles. Uh, you see, ah, like in the sky. So eagles in the Bible are God's children who fly very high. The highest flying bird is the eagle. God children always try to be near the lord close to the lord hi always spiritual hi and these people don't seek any ordinary food like a uh, vegetarian or they only seek non vegetarian where the meat is there where strong food is there you know the character of eagle it sees the strong meat very far you see he can see the sight even from hundreds of kilometers very sharp clearly and you know suddenly comes pick up the meat and meat goes away nobody can identify it also it comes at lightning speed read job 39 job 39 chapter verse 29 and 30 job 39 chapter verse 29 and 30 can somebody read who can read job uh, 39 chapter brother 29 and 30 brother from then she seeketh the prey and her eyes behold the far off her young ones is also sort of blood and where the slain are there is she See, from whence she seeketh the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up the blood, and where the slain are, there is she. This is the word Jesus quoted in Luke. You see, it sees the prey from far off. Comes it to take that meat. Similarly, this meat only, this dead body only, is a good food for the eagle. similarly the strong food is a good food for the christians and these christians who want to be always spiritually high they come from very far distance you see they take lot of pain efforts for what to eat this food the strong food which jesus now is giving at the last second runs just imagine see huh? you are all where you are all so so far outside india such a far country very good eagles you what are you seeking you are seeking the lord's meat the truth you are strong truth we don't the same old doctrine sir what does the bible say of god's plan you are coming from very far listening to the truth you see and uh, you are eating that meat because that is the meat that gives you the strength this is the meat dear brother that gives us the strength and jesus told that where the dead bodies are there the eagle will gather where the spiritual food is there god's children even though it is very painful very far they will come hence you see huh? when the meeting was started how many people were coming suddenly everybody disappeared why because they don't want the spiritual food they want don't want strong food they want very light food where it should be very pleasant to the ears nice jiga jiga music hallelujah amen oh very good very good huh? then live a happy life but why people are staying till the end 
because these are the faithful Christians who seek meat. They want the real truth from the Lord and Lord leads them to the strong truth. Hence, dear brethren, you see, these verses are not speaking about rapture at all. This is speaking in a spiritual way. So this is, you see, the end about a rapture. The word rapture never comes in the Bible even once also. Okay, so we have clearly seen what does it uh, versus clearly mean. So, uh, anybody has got any questions, they can ask.